Shake the Room, Fire Nation. JLD here, and welcome to Entrepreneurs on Fire, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network with great shows like The Shake Up. Today, we'll be breaking down Young Entrepreneurs Lifestyle 2.0. To drop these value bombs, I have brought Peter Vug into EO Fire Studios. Peter has been recognized by Entrepreneur.com as the world's leading authority for millennials and entrepreneurs, and he's also the author of the book, Seven Rules to Seven Figures. In today, Fire Nation, we'll be talking about Peter's one-page productivity plan. We'll talk about entrepreneurs' biggest addiction, the wealth complex, and the four keys that all millionaires invest in, and so much more when we get back from thanking our sponsors. If you have an idea you want to turn into reality, then it's time to take the first step and win some awesome prizes by entering the Site It contest. Visit www.start.site to submit your idea today. The first 100 valid entries will get a standard .site domain free. That's www.start.site. Turn your small e-commerce business into the next big thing with Klaviyo. Klaviyo is the easy-to-use email and SMS platform that gives you everything you need to build genuine relationships with your customers. Give it a try with a free account at klaviyo.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash fire. Peter, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something that you believe about becoming successful that most people disagree with. What's up, JLD? Great to be here, man. I think one thing that I really have realized that most people don't agree with me on is there's no balance. Mm. When you're growing a successful business, there's zero balance unless you work a nine to five. In entrepreneurship, it's more about harmonizing everything together that you care about, that you love, and that's a priority. I don't want to get home from work at five or six and not talk about my business and my mission with the family. So I think people need to understand Get rid of balance, focus on harmonizing everything together, and you'll be a lot more fulfilled and get better results. Fire Nation, I think you can already tell this individual knows what he's talking about. I mean, he's been doing this for a long time. We've been friends for a long time. He was a massive supporter of my book launch back earlier in 2021, so I'm super grateful for that. And we're going to be talking a little bit about his new book coming up, Seven Rules to seven figures, and we'll be giving this call to action at the end of the episode as well, but sevenrulesbook.com slash fire. He's got a lot of cool stuff waiting for you there, so as you're listening and just getting fired up by what Peter's sharing, keep that URL in mind because, man, Peter, my audience knows that I'm all about productivity. To me, productivity is producing the right content, which few people do. You have a one-page productivity plan. Share that with us. Great start. So in terms of a business plan, I feel like everything has changed and it's it's a new economy now. And I think simplifying everything is the best way to get the results you want and to have some clarity and peace of mind. We both know that when you have absolute clarity, there's nothing more exciting that can help your confidence and help you move a little bit different towards your goals. So this is something I created years ago that's helped me drastically in terms of bottom line results, clarity, fulfillment, success, and results for my business growth. So first, a lot of people have all these ideas and once you shift from complexity to simplicity, it makes it easier to take action. So I created a one-page plan and I'll just simplify it. The first thing is Figuring out, like with deep precision, what is your ideal six-month vision, Mm. like your ideal outcome. And I think a lot of people, John, when I ask them this, they're very vague. They're like, I want to make more money. I want to do better. I want to lose weight. I want to crush it, right? It's like, no, no, no. You have to have precise vision here and you have to base it off of your potential and off of what's possible, not off of your past or not off of insecurities, And a lot of people base their future, they base their business off of what they haven't done or what they feel like they're not capable of. And I think that sells people short. So I always start with things that scare me and say, this is my ideal vision. If everything went perfect, if me and you were hanging out in six months, what would have to happen for you to be fully satisfied and excited about your results? And there's no limitations here. So have people just write a paragraph. Now, is that paragraph, do you fully believe you can do it? Maybe not, but that's not relevant right now because we're gonna map out a game plan. That's the first step. Second step 
is figuring out your most important values right now in your business and life based on what stage you're at. So obviously when I was broke, JLD, one of my values was money because when you're broke, you have no choices, you're stressed, you're frustrated, right? You need money to run a business. So my value at the time was money first because I needed to build my business and invest back. Right now, my values, peace of mind, flam, family, freedom. So values change, but you have to know what your top ones are when you're starting your business. So value chain, okay, family, autonomy, financial freedom, business growth, adventure, whatever it is. Measure everything against those values because the number one way I see people living incongruently and being stressed out is they're not building a value-based business that's based on what's most important to them. And if you have a business that doesn't match up and align with your most important values, you're always stressed. So I see a lot of people now, if they value freedom and they value flexibility, but they have a, a cap or a job that someone else tells them when they show up, they're always stressed, right? So that's why I tell people, you have to build a business that's based off your values. So once you got your, I usually put my top three to five values on this page. Next thing down, now I get focused on results. So I say, okay, what's the three to five things that have to happen to move the needle to help me get closer to this ideal vision? What are the five results I have to create? And people that are results and outcome focused produce results like nobody else. So I, I always write down the five things. Some of them may scare me. You don't need to make them too crazy where it's like, I need to write three books. We, me and you both know how tough it is oh, to man. write a book and to get it out there. So that's, that's a challenge, right? So make it doable. You know what I mean? I need to write my first three chapters uh, of my book. I need to save my first 5K. Whatever your goals are, only you know what your ideal results you wanna create are. Once you get those five down and you make it tactical, then the next thing is what gives you the juice to push forward because entrepreneurship's not easy. If it's easy, everybody would do it. So I write down my strongest reasons. I take out a new sheet of paper and I usually write down, John, my, my top 50. And if I look at my top 50 reasons, I'd say 40 of them are kind of BS. They don't wake me up in the morning. It's funny. Everyone thinks they have all these reasons. And I write down like a new car and all these things. A lot of them are physical. I realize those don't really motivate me. So I, I realize five to 10 of them really get my juices flowing, really affect me internally, really are meaningful and almost get me emotional in a sense where – it, it drives me to produce results for my vision. So if you don't have reasons right now, if you don't have strong enough reasons, if you're not waking up at four or five in the morning, super fired up and excited to take on your day, you don't have strong enough reasons and you have to reevaluate. So write down those reasons because reasons are the fuel to make you more resourceful to make things happen when you don't have the resources. So get the reasons down and then reasons will pull you through the challenges on the other side. And reasons will keep you focused when there's people trying to pull you down because when you try to reach your ideal vision, you're going to represent the strength. So you have to keep that locked in. And then below that, I really make sure that I figure out based on everything above what's a one or two skills I need to develop and master that will help me speed up the process to get to my six month vision quickest. And then I just focus, John, on mastery versus overload. I don't overload myself with a ton of information. I'm only focused on things that are relevant to that vision. I print that out. I laminate it. I put copies in my shower. I put copies in my car. I put copies in my, in my, uh, in my dresser drawer. And now the focus is letting my vision guide me, not current circumstances. And that totally transformed my life because it gave me clarity. So there's so many things, Fire Nation, that we could go through here. I mean, the value bombs that Peter dropped already are countless. But there's one thing I do want to circle back to, something he started with, which is be precise. Because I could not agree more. So few people in this world are precise. That's why when you start something like My Freedom Journal, the first thing you do is set a SMART goal, which is specific, measurable, attainable, relative, time-bound. SMART, SMART, SMART. Be precise. And I want to talk about the wealth complex because there's a lot to talk about here. And I feel like in the time that we have here today together, this is going to be really important to give you time for because there are four key areas that you believe all millionaires invest in. Let's go through those four key areas. 
Great question. The wealth complex is a lot of people don't understand or respect money and wealth at the highest level. Maybe it's how they're raised. Maybe they weren't taught that from their parents or in school. It's really not taught in society. And I've never met someone, JLD, that respects and values money. I've never met someone that doesn't respect and value money, that has any. So I appreciate and value money and understand that it helps freedom, helps give me freedom for my family and allows me to have flexibility to give back, to do what I want, to have more convenience and to be on my terms. So first is people need to realize that money is a tool. It's not emotional. It's not good or bad. It's a tool you can use for the better. Money is an excellent servant, but a terrible master. So it's just, it's frowned upon in this society because I love money. Wait, what do you mean? You're greedy? Oh my gosh, you're one of those people? No, no, no. I just value freedom for my family and able, I'm able to do what I want on my terms and it allows me to be happier and more fulfilled. So I studied for years, uh, in, interviewed mil, multiple millionaires that, that had this exact same focus and I started seeing a trend of what people invest in. And it's the opposite of most of society. So the four key areas most mil every millionaire I've ever talked to invest in. And you can tell me if this is true with you too. I, I'd love to hear this because it would it would solidify this. The first thing everybody invests in that I know that is successful is back in themselves, back in their mentality, back in their mindset, back in their perspective, and just sharpening their intelligence. Whether it's audios, videos, programs, masterminds, seminars. Every millionaire I know invests back in themselves to sharpen the perspective, to make better decisions, and to move more purposeful. First thing. Second thing, once they understand that and now they're starting their business and they have more clarity, now they're investing back into their business to grow their business, personnel, marketing, sales, advertising, their team, equipment, technology, all of those things. Because when you invest in yourself first, then your business, and you have mentors and a great network, you can't help. It's almost impossible unless you don't put any work in, you don't actually build generational wealth. Third thing, assets that produce growth consistently without you working, because I truly believe if you only make more money when you work more hours, it's a trap, and it's really hard to build freedom. We can both agree because we put in the work, John, that you make money whether you work or not and whether you're sleeping or not because of the systems you've created, because yep. of the assets you've created that produce growth for you and for your family, right? So the third thing is assets that make money work for you. There's so many different ones. There's real estate, there's multifamily, there's commercial, there's rentals, there's duplexes, fourplexes, there's artwork, there's NFTs now, there's crypto, there's uh, membership sites, there's angel investing, there's e-commerce. There's a lot of different ways, right? And I give my favorite ways and the details of how to invest in those in the book. But the fourth thing that I think people also miss out on because they're so busy being busy with their, with their business is memorable and meaningful experiences with people you care about. So once you invest in the first three things, the number four thing, it's so much more enjoyable to imagine taking your family on a two week vacation to Fiji, all expenses paid for. Imagine taking your family to Tulum or, or Dubai or anywhere you want because you put in the work. And now when you're gone, your business is working without you there and your money's working without you there. It's the most fulfilling feeling ever. And if you do it right, when you're on vacation, when you're loving what you're doing with the people you care about, it makes you wanna continue to create successful passive income for your business. So those are the four things, and I feel like most people, John, they either don't invest in themselves or they don't invest in assets to make their money work for them, and they're only investing in material things to make themselves feel better in the moment, maybe to base it off their insecurities or something, or they just save because we've been taught to save our whole life when saving is an old adage that I think we need to get rid of because it doesn't actually produce growth or results. So that's the four things. And let me know if you've invested in those four things in those orders too. Absolutely, 100%. And the one that I actually want to circle back to because it brings something up for me every time I think about it is creating and being able to have memorable and meaningful experiences with those yep. you love. And let me kind of break this down for you, Fire Nation, so it gets real for you like it's real for me. I read this article once, and this article has stayed with me since I read it, which was years ago. And the, the really overall meaning of the article is meant to show you that by the time you're 18 years old, you have spent 
80% of the time with your parents that you will spend in your entire lifetime. So a lot of us are just wow. like, oh yeah, like I'm 25, like my parents are in their 50s or 60s or whatever. Like, you know, you just kind of take for granted you have all this time with your parents and your grandparents and your loved ones, even like your siblings, your sister and whatever it might be. But this shows you that by the time you leave the house at 18 years old, you've already spent 80% of the time, the total time you will ever spend with these individuals. And when you realize that, that it is tick, 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 because life just has a way of getting out of control and before you know it, years have gone by, you will make a point once you realize this to create memorable and meaningful experiences with those you love. And you can't do that if you don't have the financial freedom that is available to people like myself and Peter because of what we've done over the years that he goes into with these seven rules of seven figures, which Fire Nation, we are going to get into when we get back from thanking our sponsors. You're an ambitious and driven individual who has big dreams and awesome ideas, and you're ready to turn your idea into reality. So what's next? I remember back in June 2012 when I first came up with the idea to launch Entrepreneurs on Fire. I was a little nervous, but also very excited. What's one of the first steps I took? Investing in my domain name. Locking in my domain name made my idea real. It automatically gave me ownership over a home base, my website, where I'd be welcoming millions of visitors over the coming years and helping them bring their own ideas to life. And you can take the first step towards turning your idea idea into reality by submitting your idea to the Site It contest today. Thanks to the folks at Dot .site domains and Namecheap, you have an opportunity to showcase your idea to the world and win some awesome prizes in the process. And the first 100 valid entries will get a standard Dot .site domain to get started with their idea. Have an idea? Then the Site It contest is for you. Visit www.start.site to enter today. And remember, the first 100 valid entries will get a standard Dot .site domain for their idea free. That's www www.start.site. Getting an online business off the ground isn't easy. There are a lot of moving pieces when it comes to building an e-commerce brand. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember, great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. Klaviyo is the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up a free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful brand and messages in minutes thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance. And with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights, you can keep growing your business as you go. Get started with a free account at klaviyo.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash fire. Peter, we're back and I do want to touch upon what we left off with, which is your book, Seven Rules to Seven Figures. I mean, I wrote a book in early 2021, and man, you wrote a book back in the day. You've written multiple books, so we both know the pain, the agony, the blood, sweat, tears that goes oh into gosh. writing a book. So where did the motivation to write this book come from? First of all, what you just shared about that stat and about that article, now it's going to forever be with me right? too. So <laughs> thank, you. Right? It is true. thank you for doing that because that's such a powerful concept. Another thing I'll say too is I used to hate vacations and I never knew why. It's because when I was on vacation, I would always stress about going back to work and back to what I hated. And then I realized that because I was escaping reality because I didn't like my reality. Mm. So having a lifestyle that you're proud of that allows you to travel and love what you do, right. it's just a different level of fulfillment. So I just wanted to share that because it's so important. Sometimes on vacation at the end, you're like, oh, I hate to go back. If you build a business you don't want to escape from, you're excited to come back and work. You know what I mean? So yeah, in terms of the motivation for the book. So I wrote the book Six Months of Six Figures in 2013, 14. And I did it because I couldn't sleep. I had this magnitude of, of mission that was growing that allowed me to just have anxiety and frustration. I had to get my message out because I had already created six figures in six months. I helped other people do it. And while I was sleeping, my message wasn't out there. So I had to get it out. And that's why I wrote that book. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I wasn't an author, but I wrote it. Now it's sold over 800,000 copies, which is crazy to me. Like, I'm from a super small town of 6,000 people. I, I never thought I would ever write a book, right? But I promised myself, John, I said, I'm not going to write another book until I have that same feeling. Mm. And two weeks, a couple weeks before my son was born, that's where really the, the idea started, where the main focus was 
I had turned down the, the couple weeks my son was born. I had turned down over $40,000 of speaking engagements and business opportunities because I really wanted to make sure I was there for my son and I wanted to be able to practice what I preached. I was always saying I was going to raise my prices when my son was born because if you're going to tell me to leave my family, my wife and my kids, I'm going to charge more because I value my family. So it actually happened and I had to step up and do it. So I raised my prices. One actually agreed to my new price, a couple bartered with my assistant and they got the price down and it was over 40 K for a couple speeches back then. And at that moment, I remember realizing I just turned down, I think it was 45 or 50 grand and I'm feeling amazing about it. I have leverage in my business. My business is creating record breaking numbers. I love what I do. I'm super fulfilled. I have the wife of my, the women of my dreams. My business is crushing it without me there. I'm traveling the world. I have all these things coming at me. I almost feel like I hacked the system in a way, but it's because I put so much time and work into it. I spent over a quarter million investing in myself and figuring out these systems. And I remember paying attention and a lot of people that I was looking up to and watching, they did either built a seven figure business, but they were working a thousand hours a month. They were working a hundred hours a week and they were nonstop like chickens with their heads cut off. I didn't want that lifestyle because I really believe if you've built a hundred million dollar business, but you don't have a lifestyle you're inspired by, you did it all wrong. Then I saw people trying and trying and trying to get the seven figures and they could not do it because they were trying to do more of what got them six figures to get the seven. And it's a whole different set of rules, a whole different way of thinking. So that was the mix of why I created it because I felt like this need to help people and help them conceptualize. You can build a seven-figure business on your terms without sacrificing your most important values and without sacrificing your freedom. You can have your cake and eat it too if you do it the right way and follow the blueprint. And that's why I needed to get that out because I felt like I had the blueprint from experience, from due diligence, and from actual building businesses. I remember so clearly sitting on my balcony in San Diego back in 2014, reading your book, Six Months to Six Figures, and having so many takeaways, so many value bombs from that. And now I'm looking forward to reading this book here on my hammock overlooking the Caribbean down here in Puerto Rico seven years later. So there it is, you know, seven rules to seven figures Crazy. seven years later. So pretty cool stuff going on here. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. And of course, we've talked about so many valuable bombs that you have dropped in this episode and that you go into more detail in within the book. Take the microphone, Peter. Take us home. What is it that you really want to make sure that we get from our entire conversation today? The most important messages or maybe the single most important message that you want to make sure people get out of this book. I know you have, again, that very special URL for Fire Nation, the number seven, rulesbook.com slash fire, seven rulesbook.com slash fire, and then we'll say goodbye. What I've realized is the greatest currency there is on the planet is the effect you have on someone else. And when you're living a world-class life, it's so much easier to give and so much easier to build other people up. And... The main message is you can get to six and seven figures and you can build a world-class business on your terms, one that allows you massive fulfillment, massive freedom, massive happiness, but you have to rewrite the story that have been, that's been holding you back for however long. You have to have a blueprint. Right now, everything has changed. I know 17, 18, and 19-year-olds, JLD, making millions of dollars. Yeah. Some making millions per month. And I know broke 50-year-olds, amazing people, genuine, hardworking, family people, family guys that are broke and struggling. It's because it's not about age anymore and it's not as much as, as it is – about experience. It's more about having a proven roadmap and understanding where the new economy is going. And I feel like this is the seven rules and the blueprint to follow if you really do want to live a world-class life. Because I think the number one mistake people make is they think they have to figure everything out themselves and they take so many opinions where if you actually get clear on who you are, clear on what you want, and clear on what you're willing to give up to get what you want, it makes everything so much easier to not just accomplish, but it makes the journey so amazing that the destination's great, but you've enjoyed it so much 
that you look back when you're 70, 80 years old and you have zero regret. You did it your way on your terms and then you gave back to other people. And I'll end with this. The number one question I get from people in the last couple of years, I've, I've always thought about what's the top question and it's how do I motivate people? How do I motivate my mom, my brother, my friend? You don't. You live your best life. If you practice what you preach, if you walk the walk, if you build an amazing lifestyle on your terms, one that allows freedom and flexibility for you and your family, the right people will ask you what you're doing and they'll be inspired. If not, shame on them. They don't want it bad enough. And that's what the book is about. It's just, it's the playbook to freedom, family, and fortune. Fire Nation, imagine that. Imagine looking back on your life and having zero regrets. I mean, I can tell you without a doubt that's my goal, having zero regrets. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm on my way there. I'm not saying I'm 100% going to get there, but I'm going to try my darnest to make sure that I look back on my life with zero regrets. And it's totally possible. And it's something that we should all be striving for. Sevenrulesbook.com. Go pick up a copy or two or three because you know there's loved ones right now that need this book as well. And you know that Peter bled he sweated, he cried over this book, sevenrulesbook.com slash fire. And listen, I can tell you this as a fellow author, if you get anything out of this book, and you know that you will, I mean, listen to what he already shared here today, give this book a rating and review. It's so important for authors. I mean, I am so honored that I have well over 500 reviews in the US Amazon bookstore. I have over 500 reviews in the European Amazon bookstore. It is so hard to get reviews, even though people will tell you all day long they love the book, you can't get them to review it. So if you get value from Peter's book, give him that gift of an honest review, so key. And Peter, I just wanna say, this is so great talking with you because you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I'm hanging out with you right now. And Fire Nation, you're hanging out with us, with PV and JLD. So keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. Type Peter in the search bar and the show notes page for today's episode will pop right up. But again, your main call to action, the number seven, sevenrulesbook.com slash fire. Get over there. Peter, thank you for sharing your truth, knowledge, value with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, brother. Hey, Fire Nation. Today's value bomb content was brought to you by Peter and Fire Nation. Over the last decade, I've interviewed more than 3,000 of the world's most successful entrepreneurs and I've created a revolutionary 17-step roadmap to your financial freedom and fulfillment. I put it all into my first traditionally published book, The Common Path to Uncommon Success, personally endorsed by Seth Godin and Gary Vaynerchuk. The Common Path to Uncommon Success is the step-by-step -step guidance that you need to achieve the lifestyle of your dreams. So visit UncommonSuccessBook.com to order your copy and I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. If you have an idea you want to turn into reality, then it's time to take the first step and win some awesome prizes by entering the Site It contest. Visit www.start.site to submit your idea today. The first 100 valid entries will get a standard .site domain free. That's www.start.site. Turn your small e-commerce business into the next big thing with Klaviyo. Klaviyo is the easy to use email and SMS platform that gives you everything you need to build genuine relationships with your customers. Give it a try with a free account at klaviyo.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash fire.